David Brenna here from flycastingacademy.com. Uh, I'm the dry fly snob. Um, and I'm going to have fun today, time for you, a couple of uh, versions of the same pattern. We're talking about probably the most popular and most used dry fly out there, and it's the Adams. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Um, it has a bit of an interesting history. I'm going to share that with you uh, now, and then I want to show you what the original Adams looked like uh, through a photo, and then we'll go from there to uh, do two ties. One for a beginning tire who just has become interested in both tying and dry fly fishing, and how to tie an Adams that will fish just fine but will not be as complex and difficult to tie as the para atoms, especially the way I do it as a clink hammer style fly. So first of all, the Adams was first tied by Leonard Holiday in 1922. He tied it for a customer who uh, fished it on the Boardman River and reported back that it worked really well. Uh, that man was Charles Adams. And uh, uh, when he returned and shared his success, um, uh, Tyre Halliday named the fly after him, the Adams. Now, what's interesting about that is there's some uh, historical dispute over whether Mr. Adams actually um, described uh, and asked him to tie that particular pattern or whether in a conversation, uh, the tire simply said, I'll tie you up a fly that I think might work. And, uh, and that resulted in the Adams. The original uh, uh, fly, and um, you'll see a photo of that now, uh, shows that it sports a golden pheasant tippet tail, gray wool body, grizzly hackle tips for wings tied forward, and a mixed grizzly and brown hackle. Uh, at the time they were called Plymouth Rock and Rhode Island Red, but they are grizzly and, and brown uh, hackles. So we're gonna tie um, a beginning fly and then we're gonna move on to the pair of atoms. So, so we're gonna start with a, a, a number 900 BL uh, TMCO, TMC size 12. And the first thing we're going to do is wrap all the way back. And then we're going to start with a very small um, piece of Zilon uh, that's going to become the tail. And um, I like Zilon as a replacement to the golden pheasant tippet on this fly simply because it has some of the same color, but um, it's more effective in terms of helping the fly float. It's a little easier to work with. So you pinch the material at the top of the fly and wrap it down and secure it. And then you're gonna to wanna to wrap forward and basically capture all those fibers as best as you can. We're gonna trim this tail and we'll trim up a little bit of these uh, loose fibers. I'm using a hairline uh, dubbing in Adam's Gray. It's got a blend of natural fibers and synthetic fibers. It makes dubbing a little bit easier. And I'm starting with a pretty small amount of dubbing. And this is something that I do that's probably different than a lot of fly tires. Rather than spin the dubbing directly on to the tying thread, I actually uh, work on it out away from the tying thread until I get it into uh, um, uh, a shape that I think will suit my purposes. Then I actually secure the smaller end of it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. Then I start to spin the fibers. And the advantage there is, is that if some of that um, fiber is already captured against the shank of the hook, you're going to be able to spin that a lot tighter and your tapered body will be a little easier 
to um, uh, put together. Now um, I'm using my rotary to get the body put on. Uh, notice that it's there's a little bit more material as it goes forward so that you achieve your taper and you get to a point where you're basically completed with the body. You can wrap backwards a little bit to um, uh, make a slightly larger thorax. That's not a bad approach. And it's ready to go, except for the hackle. Now, an Adams fly, as you saw in the photo, um, consists of two hackles, one brown, one grizzly. These are measured as size 12. Um, it's important that you have the right size or a little smaller than the right size for most of your dry fly patterns. Um, and you want to secure it and then uh, just carefully wrap forward both hackles at once, notice. Um, and then uh, try not to crowd the eye too much. And then tie them off. Now we'll trim the excess hackle. And now we're ready for a whip finish. And there you have it. A very simple pattern to tie. It is the basic Adams grizzly brown hackle, uh, dubbed body. And instead of golden pheasant tippet, we used um, just a small amount of gold colored Zelon. Now we're going to tackle um, the Adams that is my absolute favorite fly to fish. And that is um, a pair of Adams, but tied clink hammer style, i.e. on a hook that's specifically designed for um, uh, for an emerger like pattern. This particular hook is manufactured by Orvis. Actually, I think it's Diachi, but it's uh, uh, labeled an 8A00, and this is in a size 12. It does have a barb, so I have smashed the barb to make sure that I can do this correctly. Um, so there's some tricky moves to this pattern and I'll try to talk through them effectively. But if you have any questions, put them in the comments section and I'll try to get back to you. So I'm gonna secure some uh, tying thread, trim the excess, and I'm gonna start with um, some Zelon. And this is white Zelon. And I'm gonna take um, a, a piece of that and it doesn't need to be very much it's I've got maybe a little over an inch here um, and I'm gonna center it on the top of the shank and tie it down and this is going to end up becoming the wing post for the para atoms now um, here's where I think the first tricky move is when you pull this uh, material up, switch to your left hand in terms of wrapping and begin to wrap around just the Zelon, not the shank of the hook. And as you can see, that's a bit of a delicate move. You want to keep your tying thread near the base of the wing construction. Um, and as you can see, um, that tends to pull everything closer together, and that's going to make it much easier um, uh, to create the post itself. It strengthens the post, if you will. Now I tie in the two feathers. Um, essentially the same hackle feathers that we used on the classic original. 
Um, and I want to secure both of those uh, on the shank initially. And then I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to go around both the wing post and the hackle feathers, uh, not on the hook shank. I'll be securing the final tie on the hook shank, but for now, I want to make sure that I've created a post that's going to work. Now, here's where I have a real advantage uh, uh, over those of you without um, a rotary vise. Uh, because what I'm going to do is start using the, the rotary vise to move the thread down uh, the hook shank. Notice how exaggerated the top of this hook is compared to the way the bend of the hook goes very, very far um, angled uh, in order to have the hook and the hook point be subsurface. That's where the merger approach comes along, and that was made famous by Hans van Klinken. So um, here's another tricky move that you have to make on this. You have to grip all of this and actually move your hook so that you can get to the, the deep part of the bend and put your dubbing on. Now I'm basically going to do the same thing that I've done before and showed you about. I'm going to take a piece of dubbing. Um, this is um, a pretty, uh, pretty light dubbing. It's a dun color. Um, actually, they call it Adam's Gray. It's a super fine. There's no natural fibers in this. This is all synthetic. I'm going to secure this little part of the dubbing on the hook, then give myself enough room on my tying thread to begin to spin, twist the dubbing material, the superfine dubbing material, so that I start to get um, a pretty tight uh, wrap on the thread before I start applying the, the body. The advantage of this is going to become apparent very quickly. As I now wrap this um, uh, material forward on the hook, I'm getting a slightly segmented body, which I think makes a difference. And also we're getting uh, um, into having it be more tapered as we move forward. I'm gonna tighten the spin again a little bit. And as we come forward, now you have the second challenge of moving the hook while in the vise. Pinching it all and moving it back to um, uh, having the top of the hook be um, uh, parallel to the desk. Now I'm going to finish working on the body. Again, it's very segmented. It's a little thicker on um, the area that I want to be the thorax. That is the, the body that I want to have in shape. Now, it's pretty simple matter of just taking the hackle, wrapping it around the wing post that we've created. And there's one last kind of tricky part to that, this, I should say, and that is that um, you should tie the feathers down along the shank. For a while, I tied the feathers around the post, but I found that particularly using artificial materials like Zilon, the end result of that is actually that it'll come loose. So I avoid doing that. Now, before I do um, any trimming of this, the wings, the, um, the excess hackle, I'm gonna go ahead 
and do a whip finish. We'll trim the um, thread off first. We'll trim some of these wayward hackle barbels. And, and you generally don't want any hackle barbels that are below the, what you would describe as a, a surface of the water. And then finally, you can trim this wing as far back as you want. You can even shape it if you like, um, but it's not necessary. This one's got a little bit of a shape to it um, and that's okay. And there you have it. And I'm telling you what, this is my favorite dry fly to use when I'm fishing trout. Um, it's a search pattern. It matches uh, lots of different uh, kinds of mayfly hatches. Um, the coloration makes all the difference in the world. Um, and I often fish these in size 12 or 14, regardless of what's on the, uh, on the water, because that size uh, um, it, it seems to be about right for most trout to notice and respond. So there you have it, the uh, Para Adams Clink Hammer style. Enjoy this fly.